Without further ado, I'll bring up our first speaker, who's the convener and the senior pastor of the platform. The platform Nigeria is brought to you by no other but Pastor Kwajo Emade, the senior pastor of the Covenant Nation. Let's celebrate him. You may all be seated, please. You may all be seated. I think we should move this back a bit. I'm correct, right? And your mic a bit this way. I'm right, right? Aha. All right, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm not a speaker. I just came to introduce the program. All right? I'm not speaking at all today. Because um, what I will have spoken on, I think it's a conversation we should have for another day. Uh, I was actually going to speak on faith, religion, and national unity as an instrument of uniting the country. Um, what sparked that thought was that some months ago, I was flying to Manchester from London. And on the flight, the plane suddenly had a very serious dip. I mean, it was really serious. One of the most, uh, uh, that kind of experience, one of the scariest, so to speak, I've ever had. And I looked around, and people went, ooh, ooh, ooh. And the hostess also was going, ooh. And I looked at everybody, and they were all Caucasians. I said, if this was Nigeria, <laughs> it won't be, ooh, ooh. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. We'll have had all types of prayers going on. Uh, listen, and you all know this. Different dangerous prayers will have started. And it was a culture shock. Next thing, the air hostess started explaining the physics behind what was going on. I said, my people will talk about the demonic spirits <laughs> that are responsible for this. Now, the point here is that even Financial Times and BBC said this about the fact that uh, religion is one of the strongest tools in Africa. Uh, Nigeria is a religious country. You can't get away from it. And the only way you can really transform something is to start with the people from where they are. And what I was going to say and talk about was that the language of faith can be used as a tool for nation building. In fact, President Barack Obama in 2008, when he was speaking to the faith community, talked about the fact that because America back then was also a very religious country, that everybody that brought about some form of transformation used the language of faith. That even when they were going to fight racism, they needed somebody who was a religious figure because it was that language that had to be used for it. Now, the issue is that it shouldn't be used as a tool here, all right, for division. But really, the point of faith here is this is that the values of society that actually bring about progress, the values of society that have built nations and even civilization itself are actually rooted in the faith towards God, those values there. And it's those values we should look at, values like integrity, values like honesty, rule of law. Even our democratic experience that we talk about today is an expression, it is actually an expression that was taken directly from scripture, that God is the judge, which how God rules, he is the king and the lawgiver. So the entire democratic experience came out of national assembly, which are lawgivers, executive, which is, you'll find president, governors, and then the judge, which is judici judiciary there. So it's rooted deep in those things. And if it can be used as a tool here in terms of uh, get into the conscience of people. You know, I was in a country once, and I, and I saw the, 
detailed work that they did. And I said to myself, whoever did this kind of detailed work on this building wasn't just thinking about money. And I went in and I inquired, and the painter within the um, cathedral painted to a point where nobody could see it. And the gentleman said, when he was painting it, he was told that nobody will be able to see where you are painting. He said, even though nobody can see it, God will see it. All right? And if people can begin to think in that light there, as a tool now be used in that light, I think it will go a long way to transform and to build the nation. But I believe it's a conversation, all right, for another day. Huh? All right, then. All right, I just want to make one major announcement um, concerning what we want to do with the platform. Um, we do run, and we'll play one minute video uh, at the end of this once I get up. We do run what we call a YPB program and that's Young Professional Bootcamp. And what we do, and it's an offshoot of platform, is that we take young professionals, uh, about 500 or 300 to 500, depending on it, into a camp, boot camp, and they are there for four days where they are trained by professionals and business people and career people. And after that, what happens is uh, they are released and they go into uh, the community with the training that they've had. But of recent, I feel that um, because the demographic of Nigeria and Africa, all right, actually it's strong with the youth. That's where the population is. And I believe that young people also should be consciously trained also for public office in terms of occupying positions in public offices there. And to that, we're going to start another boot camp that will be to train people all right, who want to get interested in occupying public office in future. The conditions are you must be a Nigerian, all right? Number two, you must be under 30 years of age with proof to show that you are under 30 years of age, okay? All right, under 30 years of age. There will be, the website will be opened on the 1st of November. You can register, all right? under 30, okay? A test form of test to be conducted. Between three to 500 people will be taken into the boot camp. We'll get best, but we guarantee you this, of professionals, retired permanent secretaries, people who have worked in public service who understand the protocol to train the people. And then after that is done, we'll conduct another test and choose the best 30 to 50 and then after that, we'll go and meet our public officials and beg them, all right, that they should allow them to have some internship with them. That internship, let me say this here, the accommodation will be taken care of by us. The salary that they will get will be taken care of by us. All we want is two months, it's nothing permanent, two months exposure all right, to public service so that the younger generation can begin to get engaged in issues of public service and understand how these challenges and how things are. So that's what I came to say, all right, uh, this morning, and I didn't want to take anything away from it, all right, by giving any speech. All right, so if the video is ready, please, the hashtag for uh, the platform today for social media is the platform NG, all right, 2023. Please, we made an adjustment to it because it's already trending with that, so we can't change, all right, that at this stage. It's the hashtag, all right, hashtag, the platform NG2023. All right, then. If the video is ready, you can play that. God bless you all, and I want to thank all the speakers who have come from different countries and um, also people who have made huge sacrifices to be here. Um, I don't, well, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think this is content-wise, this is going to be the most powerful platform we have ever had. All right, God bless you all.